Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by Ghostbed.com. No, 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 no. No, we are anti. Dan and I are both anti Morse code. You're not. That is Hans Zimmer. Yes, we're. We're also. That is Hans Zimmer, the professional. By the way, you know what? Home. I, I, I want your professional opinion on this before we get into the news, Ross, because this has been fucking with me all night and day. Go ahead. Um, tell me the 1993 movie Gettysburg. Yes. Four hours long, yep. stacked cast, mm -hmm. amazing story. The fucking composer fucked that film up. Uh, Jared, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, the movie itself was was fucked from the get go. Um, you can you can go ahead and stop at four hour Gettysburg movie. I, I you know what? But I'm just saying, like, tell me that the music did not fuck that whole fucking. I movie. don't remember that movie. Everything you, fucked that whole movie. It, um, it, it just wasn't very good. I'm just and looking at the cast now. It had Jeff Daniels, Tom Berenger, Martin Sheen, Stephen Lang. Great who, cast. Everybody yep. remembers Stephen Great Lang. Cast. Great cast. Stephen, yeah. and it, Stephen and, Lang. And it is, was expensive as fuck. Oh, like dude. They had, they had tons of extras. They had massive battles. Oh, like, yeah. Everything real. Yep. But I'm telling you, the even you get through the first 45 minutes and the score is so awful it doesn't <laughs> match it does not like and and that's what i was saying and it's i was thinking the entire time if hans zimmer did this movie like you would feel what you need to feel in these situations yeah but when you've got like you know cheery fucking shit going on when the first engagement happens in right at the 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 border of gettysburg it's like what the fuck was this composer thinking yeah, it was. It, look, the the problem with your your first statement, if you get through the first forty five minutes, look, if you get through the first forty five minutes, you still have three and a half hours to go on that movie. Um, that's your first problem. They, they should never have made a movie that long. But if you're long. gonna do the score, sucked all of it. If you're gonna do the story, yeah, yeah. Well, the person, you, if you're gonna do Gettysburg, it has to be four hours. If I remember you correctly, I mean? though, I believe. Well, look, even Lincoln was three hours, and you know, motherfucker, yeah. he did Gettysburg and everything else. Um, the, the, if I remember correctly, I think it was Ted Turner who did that movie because he was just a diehard history, like a history buff. Um, and yeah. I think he wanted it more of that PBS ish type vibe rather than a cinematic oh, fucking God. movie. And that that's exactly what it felt like what it feels like. Yes. Yeah. It feels like a fucking PBS bullshit ass special. Uh -huh. like, I was kind of like because I just, you know, yeah, I was just thinking I'm like, well, fuck, I really don't know. A lot of the details of Gettysburg. I'm like, fuck. I'll watch this movie. Let's let's see what this is all. all yeah, about. And, and, and and so he's he's in Atlanta yeah. guy. Um, so, so CNN is also down in Atlanta, and there was a movie theater downtown at that time, and they would only show usually one movie at night, right? And but they needed something long, so they would show Gone with the Wind every night. So that way, whoever was going to concerts or whatever, if the parents had to wait, they would always go and see Gone with the Wind and then wait for their kids to get out of the concerts or whatever was happening at the Omni next door. I think he wanted that to be his next Gone with the Wind. So that way, that could play forever and he would make a gajillion dollars forever, but that movie bombs. <laughs> Who's and, the he that you're talking Ted about? Ted Turner was behind mm. that. Ted Turner. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dude, I was just so disappointed. Like, I know. I know. Could have been, Look, could have been great, and then sucks. Spielberg ended up doing it right with Lincoln. You get DDL in there as Lincoln. Congratulations. I've not seen Lincoln yet. So oh, like, fuck is that you. Yeah, it's worth seeing. Really? I loved it. Look, he won the Oscar for it. I, I loved it. Yeah, um, get, I think Gettys, oh, Gettysburg problem, aside from being four and a half goddamn hours long, yeah. is that it came kind of on the heels of Glory, which is one of the best war movies ever made. Oh, I love Glory. You know what I, mean? and I, didn't, I, I wondered if you guys would be Glory fans. I'm a huge Glory fan, but I'm, I'm non-military, so I don't, well, I don't not, fucking know. It's you not, know what? It's I'm going to really have to go back and... And, and attack glory because I haven't seen it since I was in school. It's not. I wouldn't even say that it's really a military movie. It's more of a, a movie about America and culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. Than it is like about the war scenes, like the the interaction between uh, Denzel Washington and uh, um, what's his name? Matthew Mor Broderick. Morgan Freeman. Oh, and Morgan Freeman too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dude, there was Andre Brower was in that cast. Yeah. A, well, a lot of people were in that cast. Jeff Daniels does have a really rad speech in 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 Gettysburg yeah know, because he points out like he points out that you know over over human history people have fought wars for a lot of dumb fucking reasons women fucking treasure money land taxes everything you know everything that they want he's like 
America is going down in history as the first time we're fighting a, an ideology and a right for for people to be free. I yeah. thought that was pretty fucking rad in a, in, in a speech. I was like, oh fuck, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah look, it, it's got moments to just uh, the wrong direction for that movie all the way around. Um, but yeah, if Hans Zimmer scored the top of that, that is definitely not Morris Code. We paid, it would change the movie. We paid a lot of money for that score at the top of fake news, Jared. So oh, yeah, yeah, I will have you know. Uh, first up, we're talking Corona, as always, because that is seeming to dominate every yeah. single second of our life. There's a lot of chaos, Everything. particularly waiting for this bailout bill to get passed and enacted, which it just did, right? It was uh, unanimous, I believe. Um in the Senate, the House votes tomorrow. Okay, the House votes tomorrow, but yeah. it was it was unanimous in the Senate today. And right? I could I could see the House fucking this up still. Like okay. I, w- I wouldn't get too hopeful about this passing. Oh this week. no, you can not get, at all. You can get a unanimous yes from the Senate. You think the House is going to fuck this up? Oh, yeah, they'll easily fuck. It was ninety six zero with four people who didn't vote. I imagine. I don't know if they're sick at home. Like uh, uh, Rand Paul Rand Paul's gone. Probably, he's got coronavirus. Yeah, he's gone. There's a couple of other people that can't vote right now, but. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't expect it to pass tomorrow, to be honest. Ooh, there would be a wow. shitstorm. Here's what we know is in this bill so far. The, the f- final version has obviously been hidden from the public currently. Uh, if you make less than 75 k a year, you'll get a check for $1,200 plus 500 for each child and an additional 1200 if you're a married couple. Um, so 2400 total. I Look, I got two kids. That's if you're a married couple with a uh, a total income of... 150 or, le- or lower. Correct. Right? So Correct. It's the yep. same, same as every other tax thing you've ever seen. If you make over 75000 a year, it's a lesser amount, but over $99,000. So if you make six figs, uh, you, get, you get zero. You get yeah. nada. Um, Which is interesting for California because I yes. like the, the pot. There, there have been some economic reviews about certain parts of California. So LA, uh, Silicon Valley, and the Bay Area in general. Mm-hmm. Where anything under one hundred five thousand is technically po- impoverished, right? Yes, in yeah, that area. Yeah, and and if you're at home and you're saying to yourself, dude, there's no way you can make six figures and be poor in L.A. or San Francisco. No, yes, you can. Your rent is about thirty five hundred a month. Yeah, um, in uh, L.A. That's on that's on a that's on a good end. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah let, let alone yeah, you're lucky. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, you know, uh, that's parking about, and if, all that. If other you shit, make a hundred like, grand a month. Or a hundred grand a year, and your fucking rent is thirty five hundred bucks. That's mm-hmm. um, forty two thousand a year. Yep, that's forty two percent. Then your utilities. Forty two percent of just it's just rent. Yeah, and then you you know food and all that other yeah. shit. So you should be, by the way, in about the twenty five to twenty seven percent of your income range for rent. Yeah, or mortgage. It, this at, is at the high end. This is more. This is more reason that California is just be, should become its own country. At this point, because they're living in a fucking universe that no one else can. Well, they're talking about uh, yeah, exactly. compete So with. they originally Gar Garcetti Garcetti. Yeah, Gar- Ma- Mayor Gar- Garcetti is Gar- the mayor Gar- of uh, Los Angeles, uh, whose dad failed to convict O.J. Simpson. By the way, yep. um, he he said earlier last week that uh, they're doing the lockdown and there's not going to be any punitive action and like police aren't going to arrest people. But now they're saying if you're a business and you stay open, they're going to shut off your power and water. Yeah, so that'll be fun for the residents of Los well, Angeles. Well, I mean, I- like a. Like I was saying before we hit the record button, like like right now, all these mayors and governors are like going full ham, like to go full ham. And Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti said uh, he's preparing his city to be on lockdown for another two months and be prepared for longer. Oh, look, man, I said on Ross Patterson like, Revolution today, I was like, I, I'm I'm all done with this now. Like I, I've had so many first responders hit me up and say. Look, man, it's a flu for like three, you know, three days tops, and then you're pretty much three done with to, this. Three to five days, and then get yeah. back to work. You were on one of those threads today with with um. Well, that's some first responders, and led, just with like, led yeah, by we've had a lot. Yeah, we. Yeah, I don't care. I mean, I'm well, not, that leads us into our second headline. Why don't you just bleed into that? Because well, that's. I've got a couple of other things before. Uh, okay. I haven't yeah. checked today, but the stock market, is it up again today? It is. So, uh, so last that's three, check. That's three days in a row. Then. Yeah. It was up about 1,000 points today. Uh, I'll see yeah. where it's at currently. Is yes. It, 900 points as of uh, 3.30 in the afternoon. And so what's right it now. at, like 22,000 now? Mm-hmm. So it was at, what, uh, 29 before all this started? Uh, correct. So it was at 29 before this started, and it dipped down to about 19,000. So yeah. you're up close to 3,000 points here in it'll, the last. It'll be back up to normal in two months. Um, my opinion, 
especially with all this fresh cash going out to everybody, it's going to be fucking like that. A lot of the biggest investors are now buying back in heavily right now. Yeah, well, that's there's a conspiracy theory I have that comes later in this all in this whole thing. But uh, the other part is, um, have you seen or heard from Bernie Sanders? I, you know, it's it's funny in that the you last said that. two weeks, other than him, like nothing. Swe- other no. than him swearing at a fucking reporter who asked him a question about the campaign. So he got up on the Senate floor and made a huge speech last night, and you know, his supporters were like, oh, this is the Bernie we needed. This is what we need right now." He's all done. Is the problem? Mm-hmm. Like mathematically, he can't get the votes at this point. And the interesting <laughs> question now is: Does he remain in? Just in case Biden happens well, he's to not die gonna, he's before not, the, he's the convention, not, yeah, or? he's not going to drop out if there aren't there aren't going to be any more primaries until June, probably. Yeah, and Biden said he doesn't want to do the last debate. He was like, "Dude, I I, I don't want to do this well, anymore." What he said is that we don't need another debate, which he's right. <laughs> we really don't. No, we do. You think so? Yeah, we need a debate because we need to see him on stage for two hours to see if he well, can stay awake for two straight <laughs> hours. I'm not kidding. I like, mean, that, I think that's part I think of the yeah, test. you need another debate because. If you, you know, watching the the previous debate, 40% of it was wrapped around virus shit. I'm sorry, but that's not, okay, you were distracted by what's happening right now. That's not talking about the four years of your presidency. So yeah. we need a real one where they go after each other over over how their presidency is going to be. And yeah, not just about what's happening right now. I mean, even if you go back and you take those first three questions... Now they're completely irrelevant. They don't even hold weight anymore because yeah. we've learned so much more about what's actually happening than what we knew then. So them just going, oh, I would do this and I would do this. Well, that wouldn't have worked. The only right. thing we learned from that, <laughs> yeah. the only thing we learned from that last debate is that somehow Biden's team was able to prop him up and make him seem like a fucking normal human being for a couple of hours. But everything we've seen since then is them hiding him or him just completely fumbling every time he tries to speak. Right. Like, he looks bad. He looks really bad. And I don't... Oh, yeah. Like, he keeps talking about how uh, we're focusing on the crisis right now. Like, dude, you don't have a job. (laughs) You don't work for the fuck... He he doesn't work for the government. He doesn't have any special insight into what's happening with with this pandemic. No. He's not getting daily briefings from anybody that actually knows what they're talking about. That's part of the administration. I guarantee you nobody from the Trump administration or his executive council is briefing Joe Biden. No, no, no. one. So is. what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> you know, he's shifted off of doing these coronavirus. Yeah, uh, because he briefs. fucked them up so badly. Yeah. And now he's doing kind of dipping into like the view and some other things like that. And, you know, it, it's just sad at this point. I, I don't know what they're going to do, to be honest with you. Um, I think we've turned a corner. On this, they've got to be upset. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I think CNN's probably the most upset organization on earth right now for two reasons. One is that their fucking two meal tickets. The first one was the impeachment, uh-huh. and the second one now has been this coronavirus shit. Yep, have kind of blown up in their face a little bit. Like if you look at CNN's front page right now, the biggest thing you can see on the page is coronavirus deaths in U.S. top one thousand, and then it's just a bunch of other alarmist shit. And I say alarmist because. Uh, the epidemiologist behind this highly cited coronavirus model Mm -hmm. that everybody's like everybody from both sides, the administrations globally, people have been citing this model and this is what we've been using to plan the shutdowns, how we react to it, where the testing priorities go and all this stuff. Yeah. Turns out that the guy was totally wrong and admits (laughs) and admits now that he was wrong. Right. Like he, he, he did it based on data that he got originally. And then, um, his name's Neil Ferguson, and uh, he's uh, imp- at a, the Imperial College in London. And <clears throat> New York Times has been using his shit. Uh, the U.S. government, Washington Post, yeah, everybody, everybody. Like it's it's he he made uh, uh, what they're calling a massive revision to his model on Wednesday. So let me just take you through this real quick. Yeah, originally he predicted about two point two million people in the U.S. would die. Mm-hmm. Um, and then another 500,000 in the UK if no actions were taken to slow the curve, his words. Um, However, after a single day of the UK being in lockdown, he realized that far more people than we originally thought have already been exposed to the virus. Uh Basically, like what what I've been saying for fucking three weeks now. Sure. That because 30% of people show no symptoms and a large portion of people only show mild cold-like or flu-like symptoms, the vast majority of people who've been infected don't even know it. 
Right. And they haven't and been this accounted all, for. And it. this all came right when allergy season started. Yeah. Right when flea yeah. season started. So every, everybody Wait, was Dan, just like, oh, wasn't there. Dan, post World War II, like a year after World War II and ended, wasn't there a flu epidemic that killed like 8 million people? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's not even like, like <laughs> think, think about it from this perspective. Uh, there have been two instances within the last 20 years where 50 to 60,000 people have died in one year in the U.S. from the flu. Right. Right. So anyways, this guy says just after observing one day the lockdown in the U.K. and what, how that affected the numbers uh-huh. over the next week, um, he was like, yeah, that's wrong. So he originally predicted 500,000 deaths. In the UK now, it's down to twenty thousand. Quite a big number. It's a very large difference. He also Quite stated a big that, number to be off off on. He also stated that more than half of those people would have died within the year anyway due to other health complications. And, so what, what are we doing? What and, are we doing? And that the quarantine in the UK would last probably about two to three weeks. Okay, tops. Um, so at the same rate, if you apply that same statistical logic to the U.S. situation, at the high end, we're looking at like eighty-eight thousand deaths, maybe. Mm-hmm. Doubtful because we have better health care than a lot of other places do. Sure. Um, definitely not 2.2 million. Uh, and for the record, 25,000 to 50K every year die from the flu, right? Yeah. Those are recorded cases. So I'm not trying to fucking be dismissive. It's probably good that we're doing a bit of quarantining to, to isolate the problem. It's a novel virus, it's new, it's yeah. a new mutation, so we don't fully understand it. It's good to take some precautions. Um, yeah. It's also good to run a test run, you know? Yeah. yeah. It is, yeah. But, I mean, the, the original thing that I said, six to eight weeks, probably is going to be the case. And if we go beyond that, like, I'm not saying it's going to end then. I'm saying that's when it should end. And if we go beyond that, we're just unnecessarily fucking up the economy more. That's, that's what, exactly what I feel. Um, now we'll see what happens because there's still, look, like you said with CNN, I'm look, looking at these fucking articles right now. You're scaring the shit out of the public into thinking that they, you know. America surpasses a grim milestone, according to CNN's well, I, tally. I, I, Grocery store I'm throws kind of, out 35000 yeah. in food that woman intentionally coughed yeah. on. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm more of like, okay, how does this model succeed? Because let's say we all fucking lock down for four weeks. And you you have, you know, a gross percentage of the United States population that never got exposed because they obeyed the fucking what what the CDC put out and they did it. As soon as you come back out on lockdown and somebody has this, it just spreads again to all these healthy people that avoided it. Right. <laughs> I, and then we, we go back in the loop. Maybe. I think the uh, somebody said the number on a previous live show we did but herd immunity for uh influenza for example i think is in the mid 70s so like 74 75 percent um if this guy's right and before we even detected any of this shit half of the population had already been exposed to it then we've got to be getting close to that number now right so there's there's been a new test that's been um by the way it's not just this one doctor that's making these claims. Uh, Oxford epidemiologist, uh, I, what's his name? I can't say his first name. Sinatra Gupta is his name. Yeah, Sinatra. He was, he was critical of the original model that came out, and now he's like, yeah, this is all this fucking... He, he says that he, he, he is the guy that proposed that UK definitely more than half of people have already been exposed. Right. So like they're now immune to this. Yeah. Why, why are they sitting at home? They can't be carriers and they can't catch it. Why are they sitting at home fucking up the economy? Well, the reason being is they they probably weren't tested, right? Yeah, but you can be tested now. There's a new test where you can be tested. I, I read about it this morning. I was actually talking to uh, the Led by Iron guys about their EMTs and firefighters. Um, there's a new test that can tell if you've had it already. Just give it to everybody, man. Yeah. Like as soon as possible and then if if you don't fucking if you if you've had it already if it shows you've had it already you go back to work period yeah. period yeah because there's no risk at that point like it's a it's a yeah. it's a seasonal virus you can't get it back to back like that it doesn't work that way yeah the the article that i read said <laughs> it possibly could come back in the winter but again that sounds a lot like the flu yeah that's when it's, the, it's that's when seasonal the flu is, so. a seasonal virus yeah so i mean <laughs> The narrative that we've been running with this whole time, and look, I've taken some heat. You've taken some heat from Jesse 
Oh yeah, yeah. I've yeah. taken heat from people on the internet like you're don't minimize this. This is a serious fucking problem. Yeah. Blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah, it's serious. And I get the idea that uh, it's very dangerous for the people who are most vulnerable in our society. Got it. Yeah. Let's take care of them. But you can't shut down the whole country because people who don't actually contribute to yeah. our economy anymore. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. That much. Like that not that's not a that's not a dig. That's just where they are in life now. We're all gonna get there at some point. Like you can't fucking run the country like that. But imagine that the media, particularly CNN, is using a crisis to amplify its viewers, create panic and fuck up the American economy. While there's a Republican in office, yeah, imagine that. And look, I, 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 I doubled down on Ross Patterson Revolution today on this, and you know, because the unemployment numbers came out this week, the, there were 3.3 million that filed for unemployment last week, highest in the history of our country. If this keeps going on, it will it will crash our fucking economy for years and years mm -hmm. and years. What's well, yeah, no, that's this, what the president came out and said yesterday. Yeah, you know, he's like, "Hey, we're we got to open this up by Easter because the death toll is going to be more with with us pushing ourselves into a fucking second world, third world yeah. country." Yeah, people would be <laughs> clacking off, man, because they're they're fucking out of work. Here's what I've learned: I've learned that the left doesn't even have to be in power to fuck up the economy. No, not at all. Uh, I, look, and that, you're going to find that out in the house tomorrow. I, what's your prediction on I, that, Jared? We'll go around the horn yeah. here. Uh, you think uh, House passes it, yes or no? I don't know because I, I mean, I, I kind of feel like they have to because if if the Senate was unanimous, like there's a lot of there's a lot of powerful Dems on that on that list that right. like why are these why are these junior Congress people going to go against them? You know, and that's that's what I fear. Like like <clears throat> people like AOC that fucking never belonged in in that seat to begin with. That is there as a novelty item. Like is gonna fucking try and make this about her and make make well, she, a fucking speech or some bullshit. She's, she's actually fuck things up. She's actually been pretty supportive of the administration through this whole thing. Who? AOC. Yeah, we'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, look, again, you have to decide at some point what's an acceptable amount of risk, right? Yeah. When, you're, when you're doing risk management, there's all sorts of ways to do it. There's something called risk smoothing, which mm -hmm. is where you spread the risk out amongst the bigger area so you, you know that you mitigate stuff there's risk avoidance where you just avoid it all together there's all kinds of different ways to handle that situation but one one of them has to be not fucking up our entire economy yeah because 1.2 or so percent of the population is at risk sorry man i mean that's that sucks to say that but it is fucking no life. it's 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 hey there's too many people on the boat we need to get rid of five otherwise the ship sinks yeah yeah, yeah, we're not well, getting hey, we're, but, we're not getting rid of five twenty five year olds. We're getting rid of five seventy five year olds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I, I'm sorry for your grandparents and shit you, like that. And you lived you lived your life. You got yeah. you got your time. We yeah. talked we talked about this on the show yesterday. Like, and Jared, maybe you can weigh in on this because this is a serious situation. If you were like, let's say, uh, Black Rifle Coffee's on fire, and you look in through the window, and there's a fucking a child and a 75 year old person who are you going to save first obviously you're going to save the child right yeah like it's yes. not this it's is crazy. A, this is a triage moment it's not a fucking like yes. uh this what's is called triage An andrew cuomo is like we save everybody in this country like really in new york you no. do that andrew yeah get fucked yeah, brother yeah of course you like do. you've got more <laughs> you've got more homeless people than most states have a goddamn population you have more you have more pe homeless dying a year in New York City than you have homeless populations in other places. Not yes. only that, but go poll New Yorkers of what they want to do, and I guarantee you they'd be like, we want to fucking work, dude. Yeah. I guarantee it. Um, by the way, there's a conspiracy going around in Drinking Bros against you, Jared, that you secretly what? talk about AOC because you want to fuck her. Um, yes or no? I, I'm going to need you to repeat that again. I secretly talk about what? AOC, because you want to have sex with her. What? Is, I mean, I don't secretly talk about AOC. Eh, like, people I've are saying AOC like. People are saying like you, th you, th you throw her in a lot of episodes, and therefore you secretly want to have sex with her. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that I wouldn't, just because that's funny. <laughs> like. What of if it, course it's funny. What if you guys had the greatest sex of all time? She just completely changed your life, and you were like, look, man, I, uh, dude, I'm that dating it. changed my life. I'm dating AOC. No, I, I mean, that would just be hilarious. Like, I mean, she couldn't because 
because people would pull my historical tweets and everything like that and just demolish her in the press like you your boyfriend's a fucking train wreck for our side. <laughs> like, like they couldn't like because I say they I say I pretty much say whatever I want like and it's like people try to be like that's racist I go no it's not like you know generally my train of thought is you know if you tell me you're offended I say I'm not offended what makes you more important right right well look <laughs> Kelly Conway and her husband make it work somehow so who knows uh, that'll bring us to ghostbed.com forward slash drink it bros. Our first sponsor, uh, ghostbed.com slash and prices 25% off everything in the entire store. If you order a mattress, you get free pillows. They've also got 50% off the adjustable bases. And, uh, I know what you're thinking, man. Hey, I don't, I'm not spending my stimulus money on, uh, on a mattress. Look, man, there's a 36 month page. You go program, no interest. So, they're here for you. That, that knocks it down to like 20 bucks a month. If you're stuck quarantined in one of these shitty states and you want to fucking rest comfortably, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get 25% off everything there and free pillows. Uh, it is well worth it. They ship to your house. They're coronavirus free. I think it says that on the, mm. on the uh, box when it gets shipped to you. I <laughs> uh, don't know if that's true, but uh, I'm making it up for them. Next up. Trump's approval numbers are at an all-time high. As of Wednesday, Trump's Gallup approval numbers are now at 49% approve, 45% disapprove. That's that's the best so far in his entire presidency, and in, including when he, he first got elected. There are some, uh, if you look into the, uh, the rest of the numbers, though, it's actually more interesting because it is 60% of independents uh -huh. approve of the job he's doing and 27% of Democrats yeah, you know the weird, right? the interesting part of this is this. I this article was actually on CNN last night, and I was surprised. I was like, "Whoa, that's probably the first positive thing you've ever posted about Donald Trump." Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it was really yeah. odd, but uh, yeah, look, I and I and I tried to to think about it a, a little more heavily after after this because I knew we were doing <laughs> the news today. The one thing that I can come up with is with this disease or fucking virus or whatever, whatever you want to call it. It is historic. Mm -hmm. No president has ever gone through something like this in the history of our yes, country. Yes, brand new. Brand new. So, you know, I, look, I, I obviously like Trump, but um, I, I think he's doing a great job. I don't know what more you can expect from him uh, as of today, right? Well, he yeah, was, but, he was, you know mean, he was like, mean to the press. What? Fuck the press. <laughs> yeah. Like, like that. But that's the thing that I'm saying. Uh, like, I'm gonna, the point I'm going to make now is like, like we have done this stepping stool for the last like 18 months that now finally shows the fucking true, the true motive and colors mm -hmm. from, from the fucking shitbag media yeah. is like they have been, they have done such an atrocious job at asking him like just pointed stupid ass fucking bullshit baiting questions that like now the American public should see right through them. So seeing it, seeing it, CNN ran a bunch of articles about how the public didn't trust what Trump was saying. Five, seven things Trump said wrong about right. the coronavirus. And then the next day, one of their reporters or one of the lefty reporters was like, what do you say to people that are panicking? You know what I mean? Like, so you, you have to read this <laughs> yeah. uh, chronologically. So they, um, they, they create the issue mm -hmm. by trying to instill panic in, the, in people. And then they ask Trump what he's going to say to people that are panicking because they read that he's not handling that situation well or they're trying to push that narrative. Right. That is not journalism. No. That is creating your own did you, story. I mean, did you see what New York Times did? Like, they, 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 their headline was, quoted him, I want Americans to die. Yeah, 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 and yeah. He had said, I do not want Americans to die. They just let out, do not. Like, yeah, they, they what do. What the fuck? Man, look, <laughs> journalists should be held accountable today. They're not. This yes. is going to continue to happen. And uh, look, man, I like this weekend, I'm fucking signing off for the weekend. I'm not going to read any fucking news or any of this bullshit. Like, I'm not going to get wrapped up in the hysteria or panic of this this thing. I'm going to go to the beach and enjoy my fucking life, dude. Um, and just, it's going to be 80 here and sunny. Like, and I guarantee fucking tea. You're just going to spring be, break it. Yeah, yeah. I guarantee you there's going to be a bunch of other people out there as well, man. I'll report back next week. But I think a lot of people are in our camp now of like, Hey man, like friends that I've talked to are like, I want to go back to fucking work. Like, I don't really care about this anymore. Um, so 
We'll see what happens here. But CNN is not going to stop. These news outlets are not going to stop. I mean, Jesus Christ, flip on flip on ABC News or NBC News at 630 tonight, and you'll see it is just wall to wall. Death. People are dying. Here's what we can't stop. There's not enough respirators. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, <clears throat> uh, we'll see. You know, what, uh, you, know, you know what articles have completely halted? Violence against Asian Americans. Yeah. Haven't seen any of those. <laughs> Because nobody no, believed that, that shit. That, no. that rise that that yep. New York Times post, the rise of violence against Asian Americans. Yeah, there's no rise. None. None. And nobody cares. None. And and once no. these sto- and, and to that point, Jared, once these stories don't catch for these people, they don't push them anymore. No, they because just move it, on to the next They'll one. move on to the next yeah. Yeah, fear mongering like, oh, here's fucking the next thing. Bullshit. Yeah. Uh you know who did have a had it right there was mybookie.com. Um, look, mybookie.com has all, well, they did have all, we did a, a whole entire show, Dan, you realize this, uh, about six weeks ago, we did an entire sports <laughs> episode on betting on the coronavirus. All of those bets came true mm-hmm. and they were like five to one. Um, you're welcome for that. Uh, now, right now, since everything is canceled, including March madness, mybookie.com is having a blackjack tournament. For the end of the month, mm-hmm. you can also bet on esports and everything else, uh, poker, slot machines. Since everything in Vegas is closed, they are open. Go to mybookie.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros Casino. Uh, it will Ooh. double. It'll double and a half your deposit, a hundred and fifty percent, dude. Uh, yeah, I got Dakota set up on it this morning. Oh, you did good. I was I was on yeah. air and he was texting yeah. me. Um, Dakota's one of those people doesn't understand if you're on air. He's like, man, I can just keep texting. Like, you'll just text me forever. Yeah. And it's like, no, definitely can't do that. Uh, it'll double and a half your deposit. Go to mybookie.com, Drinking Bros Casino. Uh, you can bet on everything, and it'll it'll t- if you deposit a hundred, you'll bet get about two hundred fifty. Everything, everything, yeah, video games and shit. Next up, Creepy Joe says <laughs> the the Democrats don't need any debates. I touched on this a, a little bit earlier, yeah, but. We uh, did. After seeing this press conference, you know, uh, it seems like he does, dude. Um, you know, me personally, I'm done with it because I already know who the winner is. But I understand the two of you guys now after after ta- hearing you talk yeah. earlier. I understand that you want to see him get through two hour, a block yeah. of two hours because he's only been coming <laughs> out for about seven to ten minutes a piece for this last week. So I, I'm, I'm going to change my stance I, here and I, say that you guys are right on this. I don't think it's going to happen, though. And I think I think there's a good chance uh, – and this is our next story, but I think there's a good chance that somebody replaces him. Great, and let's let's roll into it then, because it, 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 you have here that Andrew Cuomo. There has been numerous articles that are saying, "Hey, man, they're setting up Cuomo mm-hmm. to take over for him at the <laughs> at the convention." Yeah, um, man, CNN is putting him on every single fucking night in prime time. Yeah, and there's a Twitter account every dedicated night. to drafting him, and it says something yep. like. Uh, we need a we need a new nominee who can actually lead people through a crisis. Tell me what Andrew Cuomo's doing to lead people right now. <laughs> like honestly, what is he doing? He's going on television twice here's, a day. Here's what uh, Elon. No, Musk, he's doing a bunch of bitching. Here's mm-hmm. what Elon Musk is doing. He he picked up the telephone, found ventilators and respirators, and bought them himself and gave them to the people. Yeah. What what did Andrew Cuomo do with the the second largest <laughs> the second largest budget by state in the entire country? What did he do? He hasn't Nada. done shit. All he's done is bitch and complain about FEMA. Like, oh, well, you can come pick which twenty six thousand people are gonna die. Then I guess, yeah, like some kind of fucking passive aggressive crazy ex girlfriend. <laughs> like, get fucked, dude. You are a piece of shit. All I've seen him do is, I've seen him bitch and complain. I haven't seen him do a goddamn thing. And by the way, where's Bill De Blasio right now? Go ahead, vanish. Have you heard from him at all? Well, I will say this. So oh, he's working hard. What is he? Is he a doctor? Cuomo, no, he's the fucking mayor, man. Cuomo said, fuck you. If you don't get your city under control, I'm the governor of the state. You're the fucking mayor of the city. If you don't get it under control, I'm going to set regulations for you, and you, you can go fuck yourself. Never have I seen a governor tell a Damn. former presidential candidate to get his fucking shit yeah. together mm. um, like this. But, uh, yeah, man, I, I feel the same way. Like, I feel like Cuomo is jockeying for this, not necessarily oh, yeah, for is. this year, but for 2024. I think he's ripping the Rudy Giuliani handbook here of like, well, everybody loved Rudy after 9-11. They're going to love me right after the coronavirus is over. And it's like, come on, That's man. what I mean. I, I feel like a lot of these governors are using this as, you know, the – I'm going to try and out governor the other governor. Yes. Like that's, that's why fucking Newsom is like a, a fucking radical. <laughs> I agree. He's uh, yeah. I, agree. I mean, look, 
fucking Cuomo is just another mewling turd. That's it. That's all he is. He's he's just like whining. Somehow it's become in in twenty seventeen to present, it's become leadership to lob bombs at Trump. Like, look how effective just, he is at yeah. fucking talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, shut the fuck up, dude. Again, that's, that's all they're I left with. I go back to this. I go back to this. Like, the account, the the lack of accountability for people to just lay out on the table and go, "What did you do? What yeah. did you do?" Just like Dan said. Fucking Elon Musk picked up the phone and found ventilators. What did you do other than go on camera and bitch? Yeah, yeah, that's all he did. And I can tell you this. If this draft Cuomo thing happens, Biden leaves and Bernie gets fucked over again. No like one will that, vote. There's no way that the four, 35 to 40 percent of Democrats who are lean b- Bernie yep. are going to come out and vote for Andrew Not Cuomo. one prayer. Not there's just no way. No, because Cuomo has been very critical of de Blasio, who's in the Bernie camp. Yeah. AOC, who's been in the Bernie camp, shit yep. like that. It's just not going to happen, man. And, uh, you know, they're not going to win either way. No. But this would be here's, here's very embarrassing for yeah. them. Real question is when Trump gets reelected, is anybody in the media keeping track of where that short haired girl is that did the, the, the crying no? Oh, yeah. oh, dude! From the previous election, it's so you know, funny it's you like the most so popular. funny you like, said that. Like, dude. do we get a round two of that? That's all I want. <laughs> That's all. It's the only reason That's I'm going I to want. vote on November third mm-hmm. is I want to see that girl pop up again. You That's know what it. we should I do? Just, I want to see her again. Same. I'm hoping somebody <laughs> keeps track of her, and they're like, okay, when the election <laughs> results come out, we need to film your reaction. <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna be and on. I, I'm just gonna be on Instagram. To be honest, looking up hashtags. Yeah. Like not I mean, my I, not my I, president. I'm gonna be following the hashtag not my president on November fourth. I can't wait to see. Like I maybe she sets herself on fire. Like she goes full, you know, monk. Yeah, it would Tibetan. be the best. So if you remember, that was at the uh, <laughs> inauguration last year. We all got invited. We didn't go because the weather was terrible. This year, though, I want to go because I know we'll get invited again. I want to go simply for the fact that we might get to see this woman again. I just want to see who this is in person. That's it. That's all I want to say. Have, have we ever done research to see if anybody's identified her? No, uh, but and, and that's a good job for Alec. We, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Alec. You can look that up. But hey. we have done research on the black guy with the huge dick. Yeah, Bert said yeah. We, Bert wants him to come on Drinking Bros. He We're trying died to in oh. 2011. So I did. We did the research on oh. that. He died in so 2011. He has no clue that he has <laughs> been the most popular thing. <laughs> Nothing. And that's the, the two saddest stories during the coronavirus for me are the black guy didn't get to enjoy his moment of fame during all of this. He is the the mascot for the coronavirus. Dude, dude, yes. 90% of and the American population has seen your dick. Dick, yeah. It's, it's amazing. He would be one of the most famous guys in America, only underneath Joe Exotic. And that's the other shame about this is Joe mm. Exotic doesn't get to – Enjoy any of this. Yeah, right I talked now. to Tommy for half an hour last night about what do you think Joe Exotic's doing in prison right now? Oh boy, like does he have a harem of meth head gay dudes just following him around now, or is he getting plowed out, or what's going on there? You know, I don't know how that works, but they they showed an updated headshot, uh, or uh, yeah, mm-hmm. what, what do you call it, a mugshot? Mugshot, him? yeah. Um, he does not have blonde hair anymore, and that fucking hurts I my not, soul. I have not partaken <laughs> in this yet. Oh, Jared, you're Tiger I'm King behind. it up. Tiger King it yeah, up, but- man. It, it was funny because somebody somebody wrote a synopsis of like if ten years ago someone from the future stopped me and they were like, "Hey, I'm just I'm just letting you know, you know, they try yeah, that guy on The Apprentice becomes the president. They try and impeach him. Kobe dies in a helicopter crash, and the only thing keeping we we have a deadly virus that wipes the that sweeps through the United States that forces everybody in their homes." And the only thing that keeps people from fucking killing each other is a is a hillbilly redneck that has a hundred tigers oh, and dude. a fucking dead black dude with a giant penis. I know. Like if you if you just stop somebody and said you showed them these two pictures, Kobe Bryant's <laughs> helicopter crash, those three yeah. pictures, and that's it. And you'd be like, wait, what? What saved America? They were like, I don't know, soldiers. No, no, no. memes, bitch, memes. That's all that memes. saved America. It was dick memes. <laughs> That and CBD. <laughs> Next up, we got KillCliffCBD.com. 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. Free shipping and 30% off a case with the promo code Drinking Bros. Knocks that shit down to like 50 bucks, dude, for an entire case. You will not piss hot damn. out there if you were. Damn. Damn. Ooh. Damn. 
Uh, they got grape. Damn. They got uh, mango and the uh, orange kush up in this bitch. I, look, <laughs> oh, I I used to drink a can every night. Now I'm drinking one every afternoon as soon as we get off work because there is no gym to go to or any of that, uh, that bullshit. Um, so if you're stuck at home with the family, dude, and you want to fucking tune out for a little bit or just need to relax, go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros, 30% off and free shipping. That is a big deal. And there's uh, no carbs and sugars in it. Mm-hmm. So they're while all, you're chilling, you, you're not gaining weight. They're also working mm-hmm. on they, – they've put together a satirical conspiracy theory website mm-hmm. uh, that I'll, I'll be releasing sometime soon. It's uh, really fun. Oh, I love those guys. And in addition to that, we're going to have a special guest on soon um, who's become part of the Killcliffe family, and his name's John Bringas. Yes. Man, he was, but we were supposed to do a uh, baseball <clears throat> preview show with him, and then there's, there's no baseball. No baseball. Yeah. So we, Today was opening day. Yeah, we're going to have him on Tuesday – Okay. Next week, um, so he he wants to do more. Apparently, he is a giant conspiracy nerd. Oh shit! Get him on here. So we're gonna do a call in show with him. Be awesome. And uh, yeah. T- yeah, Tuesday we'll be talking about sports and shit. But then we'll schedule another one maybe later in the week or the week after for a conspiracy, a straight up conspiracy theory show. Great, because he's like deep into it. He loves it. Big fan. He's like Evan. He like he is super into it. Fuck yeah! He wouldn't man. stop talking about it. It was get, got kind of creepy. <laughs> and now he's got my phone number. Yeah. Like, oh, dude. You a little late night text. Uh, one person who doesn't have our numbers is Kathy Griffin, um, who's, mm. man, I, look, she's in the hospital. Uh, she posted uh, that she's in an emergency room with unbearably painful symptoms, blah, blah, blah. I'm the same with you, man. She, like, here's the thing if somebody should die from the coronavirus, can we all agree that yes. it should be Kathy yeah. Griffin and move on? Fuck, that would well, be great. Here, here's no. her. She's bitching and fucking raging about. She so can't get a test, she, right? She said that b- b- because of the CDC rules instituted by Mike Pence, she can't get a test. The rules say that if you don't show symptoms consistent with that virus, you, then don't, you don't get, get, a, get test. a test. Yeah. It's not like they. And what? It's what not is like no, 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 painful. No women and yeah. no gingers, man. Get them out of here. Hell no. <laughs> no, it's not that, motherfucker. It's that you don't have the right symptoms. Yeah. That's why you don't get a test. You don't. You don't get to decide. You're not and a medical what's professional. And painful? Yeah. I don't know what that like, means. You're, you're wheezing. Childbirth. You're coughing. You've she's, got a running nose. She's tweeting. You got a fever. She's tweeting from the hospital. She's tweeting from the hospital with pictures. Abby Griffin mm. is a stupid bitch. Here's yeah. what. She, here's what she said. <laughs> she said, "Quote: uh, He uh, Trump is lying about testing. I was sent to the COVID nineteen isolation ward, which is probably a thing." Uh, in, isolation. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a major <laughs> hospital ER, which I assume is somewhere in LA, from a Cedar separate Sinai. from a separate urgent care facility. So she was sent to a second place, um, and then she said the hospital couldn't test me for coronavirus because CDC quote uh, Pence task force restrictions. Hashtag test test test. No, you stupid bitch. Yeah, you're fucking removing a testing kit out of circulation. <laughs> For somebody that actually needs it because you're a fucking entitled cunt. Yeah. You understand? Shut the fuck up, Kathy yeah. Griffin. God yeah, damn it, Yeah, I mean, this this keeps getting worse because I, I look at this. Entitlement is real. And you, yeah, and you also know, look, she probably doesn't have it, one. Two, um, you know, she's just, uh, she's 59, so she's on the cusp of the age range of, of all of that nonsense. Dude, this is just a, it's a, it's a, it's an attention grab. It's, it oh, is. I get to. I get to blame Trump, and I get I get to be all over the media for a minute. Yeah. Look at her picture uh, from the hospital. First of all, I think it's Cedars. I've been there before. Her face looks like and melted is, butter, by the way. There's no ward in there. There's no, no. isolation. Mm. There's no COVID-19 no. ward. There's none Can of that there. Can I find this on Twitter? Oh, yeah. Is yeah, this yeah. on Twitter? Just go to yeah. Kathy Griffin. By the way, just I for, mean, she probably has me blocked. I talk a lot of shit to her a lot. <laughs> yeah, we hate her. Just for the rest of, any, any of the rest of you out there that think you deserve whatever the fuck your feelings being hurt doesn't entitle you to a test for a very specific virus no that's not how that works but in la it means you're just not famous enough to get it because everybody else has gotten one that's super famous yeah just not you kathy Griffin. Yeah, maybe a hundred years ago when you <laughs> anybody gave two fucks about you listen literally her she's fa- in her she's in her own goddamn hospital room in a bed that's what i said like yeah, there's no war. She's not just in a yeah. She's not in a triage line like no. hey, fuck off. She's at Sears like, where it's super nice. That looks nicer than your, my house. Oh I my wonder. God. I wonder. Are here. people getting coronavirus FOMO now? Is it like autism? Yes, in LA. Like, have it you is. noticed how many people that are clearly not autistic now say that they are? Have yeah. you noticed that? Yeah, 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 or yeah, like, yeah. oh, I'm bipolar. Like, no, I know bipolar people. I've dated bipolar. People. You are not bipolar. <laughs> my man. You're just kind of moody. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
There's there's going to be coronavirus FOMO now. Yeah, there is. Like people are going to be like lying about having coronavirus. I know. Like yeah, I had it. Oh, dude, a, a lot like, of people are fucking her up on here. Oh like, yeah, oh, yeah. Got, even major destroyed, celebrities. Yeah. So you're in a ward when you haven't tested positive. Something is off here. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe, you're in a coronavirus ward. Maybe go home. You're moved to. A, Leave that bed for somebody that actually needs it. You there's, fucking I, I know both the ma- there, there's three major hospitals uh, there. Like there's Cedar Sinai, which is super fucking rich in Beverly Hills. There's the one in Santa Monica, which is also super rich. They don't have COVID nineteen wards. Uh, and then there's one, <laughs> dude. In, that's what everybody's saying. Yeah. There's like, there's dude, one in Van no Nuys. Hospitals are putting you in a in a nineteen war isolation ward without verifying you have it. No, mm. and, and uh, the, the other one is uh, there's one in Van Nuys that's super shitty, and I can tell from that picture she's definitely no, not, she's not that there, one. No. So fuck off with all this. Um, you know, again, it's another <laughs> thing to, to try to stay relevant, but good luck with that. I wonder uh, if Brian Williams is going to put out a special report that he's got. Cro- I was there under sniper he's fire. He's had it eight times. Uh, <laughs> then, oh, like, dude. Uh, I originally got coronavirus when the 9-11 towers were collapsing around me. Yeah. And I was saving people. Like, he's, he's very creative. He's a creative guy. <laughs> Somebody just quoted Greta Thornburg. Thunberg, yeah. That, yeah, that... that in, in in one hour, How dare she you. she had put out that she she had coronavirus, and then fifty minutes later, she said she's recovered. So they they were just like, Greta recovered in fifty minutes. Can you beat her time? <laughs> yeah, man. And if and if you're out there, if Greta Thunberg can recover in fifty minutes, so can you. So let's yeah. all get back to work. Yep. Uh, <laughs> next. By the by the way, when the president says that the C, the uh, FDA is sped up. Trials, that doesn't mean the trials are over. Just I'm going to go through a couple things very quick. Yeah. That doesn't mean that the trials are over, that he's endorsing everybody to go out and get this medication. Also, if the medication kind of sounds like a fish tank supplement, yeah, you can't just take it. No, you can't just pop that in your gullet. Because you'll die. Yeah, you will die pretty As quickly. Two people, two have, people have found out. You yeah. cannot take fish tank supplements. Like, I can't think of, <laughs> like, let's see, uh, sodium is salt right yeah nacl uh-huh uh sodium chloride that's yeah. salt but sodium cyanide is cyanide close close but don't put sodium cyanide on your potatoes because you will two die. different yeah. things two different things you can make sodium cyanide by yeah. the way Fish from tank. Yeah. yeah you can make Fish sodium cyanide stuff. out of uh, almonds by ah, the way. look at that Look at that. The fish uh, tank. The next fish up, tank stuff. why hundreds of CEOs resigned before the world fell apart? This is the conspiracy theory. That I, I talk love about. this conspiracy theory, by the way. So Bob Iger was one of them from Disney. I mean, this that's just... He walked out midweek on a Tuesday yeah. and was just like, deuces, I'm done from Disney. This is wild as fuck. Yeah. I, I didn't know any of these numbers until I read it, but here, here's some of the numbers. I, so. d- I, d- I did. So I, I, I talked about this the other day because... It is so astounding that I'm like, man, but here's the thing. Most of these corporations have operations all over the world, right? right. China is where all of everybody's money is coming from mm-hmm. or, or, or we're getting it from either way. I guarantee you they, they talked to people earlier and they said, hey, man, shit is getting fucked up over here from this virus. And then all these CEOs were like, yep, we're jumping mm-hmm. ship, cashing out on all these stocks. Yeah, but while it we started like in early 2019. It was all throughout 2019. So 1,500 CEOs of major companies resigned, weren't fired. They resigned yes. in 2019, including the CEOs of, let's see. Boeing, uh, United Boeing, Airlines, yeah. Gap, McDonald's, Wells Fargo, Under Armour, HP, Kraft Heinz, Bed Bath & Beyond, Disney, well, um, they, so these are just so far in 2020. Well, hey, Disney, hey, hey, IBM, hey. Harley Davidson, T-Mobile, LinkedIn, was, Mastercard, and Hulu. Hulu, yeah. yeah. J- just in was, three months. Illuminati yeah, shit, Jared. What, no, 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 no. What was going on in early 2019 that could have had a lot of very rich, powerful people afraid? Uh, the fucking Epstein. pedophile shit, yeah. Epstein. Oh, man, that's a great one. Yeah. I, shit, I did not say that the other day. So, that's great. And you, the, had, you had both Harvey Weinstein and Epstein rolled up yeah. at once. Oh, fuck, and if these guys man. knew somebody was going to sing. Well, here's like, the, here's the other. Was, here's ah, the, here's, Jared cracked the code, Here's I think. the other part of it. They weren't just leaving their posts. Uh, billions of dollars. So all these companies were actually selling their own stock. The, yeah. The CEOs and boards of this company were selling stock in their mm-hmm. companies like disney was selling its own stock billions of dollars worth of this shit yeah and now they're going to try to buy it back when it's cheaper now and the stock market's gone down you see how that works oh my god dude yes because look everybody's buying right now yeah uh, everybody's trying to get back in and uh i think jared's theory 
combined with this. Yeah. Because, uh, look, I, Bob Iger yeah. was extremely well-respected. He just walked out midweek, but it was, I don't know, three weeks before the virus became serious. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think he fucking knew for sure, but I think he was clean probably of the Epstein shit, but the rest of these motherfuckers... I, I'm, well, I'm, I mean, with it's not I'm with you. I'm not necessarily saying that they all like took part, but I'm guaranteed yeah. they all knew. Yeah, they yeah. all they all had been around it, and it was like, okay, how deep are they gonna go mm. when when this guy gets rolled up? Like, what all is gonna come out? You yeah. know what I mean? Oh yeah. So it was just like, hey, I'm gonna cash out. I'm gonna go spend time with my family while I still have them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> One of these on. days, Before I. One of these days, 15 years from now, we need a freedom of information request uh, put in for the Epstein documents. Mm -hmm. And then we just go fucking murder every single one of those people. Uh, look, sooner or like later, it, those are going to come out. And it's going to yeah. be a fucking field day, if you dude. Were, if you were well, traveling, I heard if you were traveling like had had put a bunch of info out. Maybe if yeah, you're yeah. if you're tra if you were traveling to the Lolita Island. Mm hmm. You got to go. Gotta, oh, yeah. You, you got to go. You got to go. Like, you got to go. be murdered in your home in front of your family, I feel like. I agree. Like, this is, we need to go fucking full on uh, uh, purge style. Boondock but, Saints. But yeah. you've got, there's only, there's a list. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you can't just go purge yeah. anybody. But these people, if you see them out, one day a year, you got them. Yeah. <laughs> You got to fucking <laughs> Ike him. Uh, last but not least, Hank Johnson, the dumbest motherfucker on earth, has filed. Uh, HR 5717, oh, the most anti to a bill in American history. You might remember this dummy for his concerns that too many people on one side of the island of Guam could make it tip over. Uh, you want to explain this, this bill to everybody? Oof. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, I mean, there's a lot there. There's a lot going on. So here's what uh, HR 5717 would do. And by the way, um, we were, we were going to have a guest on today, Philip, uh, from gun policy coalition. And yeah, we'll do a whole episode on that one with him. Yeah. Yeah. For whenever, sure. whenever we can get him down, we'll do that. Uh, but he, <clears throat> you can, you can follow him on, uh, on Instagram. I think it's just gun policy or some shit. What's their name on there? Do you remember? Man, I, I, I got to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. Look it up right quick. We'll while, do a full show this. with him. But anyways, um, this bill in particular. So the, here, here are just some of the things it does create a national permit requirement just to buy a gun. So like in New York, you have to get a permit and then go buy a gun, mm -hmm. which is fucking unconstitutional shit. Um, it would establish a national gun registry, which is something that's not going to happen right. ever. Um, institute a national red flag gun seizures law, mm -hmm. like federalize that process. Uh, ban virtually every semi-automatic rifle that exists in private hands. Like so all quote unquote assault rifles are gone. Um, <clears throat> make it a felony to purchase high capacity magazines. Uh, tax firearms at thirty percent and ammunition at fifty percent. <laughs> um, by the way, for a constitutional right like voting, for example, yeah, anytime there's been a tax applied to try to make it prohibitive, whether it's abortion or the poll tax, you might remember. So there was two, a couple of things after Reconstruction started that white people tried to use to keep black people from voting. Yeah. Poll taxes one because they knew they were poor and couldn't mm -hmm. afford it. Then there was a literacy test as well. Uh, anyways, uh, it's there's so much case law in this saying it's un unconstitutional. At any rate, uh, force gun owners to have their guns locked up at all times, which makes them super useful. Um, provide uh -huh. provide jail time for anyone who buys more than one gun in a month. Period. Ooh, oh. that's that's a lot. That's uh, a lot. Force gun owners like da, 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 criminalize the sale of firearms to a person under twenty one. So you would have to be twenty one to own any gun. But does that mean you Shotgun should be over twenty one then to to be allowed to enter the military? Because right, you can fire a gun yeah. at, at eighteen. It bans the sale of all suppressors and makes it a crime to construct a gun in one's own home. Ah, which I'm not sure what hmm. that means. So I can't put an optic on it. Is that what that means, or does it? I, I think I can't it's three D. It's a print a three D gun. Well, those things don't work anyways. Uh, the By the way, other than Hank Johnson, the uh, co-sponsor of this bill is uh, Pocahontas. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, God. Elizabeth Warren. Warren. You don't say. Go yeah. figure. Is she still running for president? No. No, she's not, actually. You can both get fucked. Hank Johnson and Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Hank Johnson doesn't even know where he is. Hank. No. He, he keeps getting... How does a car start? 
He yeah. keeps getting elected. <laughs> he keeps getting elected, man. Keeps getting elected. Get elected and Georgia's man. fourth Congress is the southeast suburb or the south. Oh, in the fourth. I know that the is. The southeast part of fucking Atlanta. That's basically. surprising. Wow. That's surprising, actually. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta's, there's fucking guns all over Georgia. He's, for he's been in since uh, 2007, which means he first got elected in November of 2006. So he's okay. been in there. He's, he's been reelected seven times. Yeah. A long time. A long time. A long time. Uh, we're going to get to the drinking bro of the week, and then we have, we have a bonus story here uh, afterwards. Yeah, this one's funny. Yeah, this one's really funny. So we'll, we'll end on a high note today, kids. <laughs> we're to end on a high note, but I want to get to this drinking bro of the week. This was submitted by Jesse William. He said, uh, hey, guys, uh, not sure if this is the place to do it, but I'd like to nom- nominate a drinking bro of the week. It is. Go to Drinking Bros Podcast Facebook page and submit all your drinking bros of the week. That is exactly where we go, Jesse. Um, so thank you. On Tuesday, March 7th, while serving an arrest warrant, with U.S. Marshals, Deputy Jacob Keltner of the McHenry County Sheriff's Office was shot and killed. Uh, right around, it was after a vehicle chase, uh, three plus hours uh, of a standoff. The suspect was asp- apprehended and is in federal con- custody on no bond. I would like to nominate him as Drinking Bro of the Week and everyone to keep his family and uh, the department in their thoughts and prayers. Absolutely, man. Um, this is another one of those situations where I think we need to go a little ham on people. Yeah. Like that, I don't like the idea of it being constitutionally guaranteed that you can't face cruel and unusual punishment. What if your crime is cruel and unusual? Yeah. Like it, I, w- w- none of us are fans of police states, especially the right. Yes. Is more, the right is more concerned with that than the left will ever be, right? Yeah. But I feel like if you get into some kind of confrontation with police, you know that they're a cop and you kill them. You should just get tortured and executed right there on the spot. I agree. Like, what's the trial for, motherfucker? You pointed a weapon at a police officer and you killed him. It's a waste you, of time yeah. and money, yeah, in my just, opinion. Just fucking murder that piece of shit right there in the street. Or and, let all of uh, let mm-hmm. everybody in the unit mm-hmm. shoot at, at the same time. Just empty out all the rounds into mm-hmm. this guy right in the street, and then just leave him there for like a good day. Yeah, for everybody else to see and be like, hey, that's what happens when you shoot a cop. Yeah. Yeah, you have to make the uh, the res- the the result of doing something like that so crazy that yeah. no one would even think of doing exactly it. like just death, the death penalty, and people are they're they're fine with that. They'll go stay in jail for ten or fifteen years and then get electrocuted. Yeah, like the, we know that that doesn't deter crime, but I guarantee you, if you fucking peel this motherfucker's skin off and then put his head on a spike, things yeah. will change because you know what. Historically, that's been pretty effective. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. For thousands and thousands maybe, of years. Maybe it's not popular. Maybe it's not PC, but it works. It works. Works really well. <clears throat> uh, the story we're going to end with is uh, the pig. A pig sparks farm in f- that's fucking funny. <laughs> farm fire in England after eating defecating battery-powered pedometer. Right. So basically, this Whew. is what happens on these farms. Yeah. This is some uh, like next-level hippie bullshit, by the way. Yeah. So to prove that the pigs are free ran- <laughs> quote-unquote free-range pigs, mm-hmm. they put Fitbits on them. You're kidding. On their legs, yep. So this pig doing what and pigs, pigs do. And pigs eat every, anything, pigs, by the way. Anything, anything, a pig yeah. will eat, uh, everything. eat a fucking a can, <laughs> so like the, an aluminum can. Yeah. yeah. The pig ate it off its own leg, obviously, uh-huh. and then shit it out. And when he shit it out, something happened. The battery malfunctioned or something. It sparked and <laughs> caught, and it burned down the whole, like, all the pig pens. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's so fucking funny. Oh, oh, this God. is the fucking best. They get exactly what they Charlotte's deserve Web right on there. this one. Exactly. And then to, to close out, Jared, you didn't know I was going to do this, but I'm actually going to give you uh, my personal drinking bro of the week uh, to Jared Taylor. You introduced something to me last night called Band Stories um, on Pornhub. Thank you. Thank you. And I told you <laughs> that I think that you just beat the internet. You personally beat the internet. I thought I was to the end of porn of like, all right, great. There's nothing left on this earth no, anymore. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. You and I, uh, look, all of us hosts are in a, in a group thread and uh, we text each other. Usually do I get gotten by something like I'll, I'll breeze through it. And then this, I was like, wait a minute. Uh, explain this to the audience because when oh, I went, to, I got, I went down a rabbit hole of it last night where I was like, <laughs> oh my God, Jared Taylor's a genius. He's a genius. 
It's dude, somebody created bandstories.com and then they're all on Pornhub, but they're all vertical videos yep. shot in 60 frames a second as if an Instagram story. They're 45 minutes long and it's the greatest shit I've ever seen. Ever. <laughs> ever. Because the hardest yeah. part about watching porn on your phone is having to turn it to the side and then like, yeah, oh, now you just or then like sliding this. and skipping and it's like, and the, now the guy you can just always meets them up. somewhere. Yeah. 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 And he meets him like in a gym or somewhere and then goes on a date and then ends up at the house. It's the best in the it's world. Also, it's I'm glad also, you, yes, you're my, you, you are my drinking bro of the week for all, that. There's Thank also you. a psychological element to that. And it's when you see things that are pornographic in a setting where you're not supposed to see it. hundred percent. It yes. makes, yes. it, makes it, it yeah. makes it way more, I don't know if effective is the right word. Yeah. yeah. But like if you yeah, went it to, it just makes it cooler. I know effective. Yeah. If you went, yeah. if you like, yeah. we're swiping through Instagram stories and all of a sudden you saw some girl getting drilled and yes. fucking that you would yeah. be like, that would excite you. Yes. I think. It tricks your brain because yeah. you think you're watching Instagram. <laughs> so the, and it's the, awesome. The reason I got so hyped about this was uh, this, there's this rapper, he's a shitty rapper, but he's got the best Instagram name, Lil Boozy. And he went on and uh, did the Instagram stories. He, he went on live and just said, show me anybody who shows me some titties. Uh, I'm going to cash app them $25. And it was some of the most graphic shit I'd ever seen. But then it, it immediately got deleted. <laughs> you brought all of this back to life that is permanently living there. And I was just like, come on, dude. The girl on the golf course, she won, dude. That blonde girl oh, on the golf so course. Great. Come yeah, on, that was awesome. dude. The golf course was great. Oh, Jared well, Taylor's my yeah, drinking bro of the week. She actually had a pretty good swing, too. She had a great swing. Yeah. That's yeah. the only that's the only one She's I a good watched. Drive. That drive was 280. Was it Gabby Carter? Is that the girl? I think so. I think uh, it was the first one that showed up in the uh, search results. My favorite. Well, this was a good one, boys. My favorite. I appreciate it. Uh, for Jared Taylor, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is Drinking Bros Fake News. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>